So what's up? I'm Matt Welcher. This is Kyle Welcher, Elite Series Pro. We're gonna be looking at uh, some crankbaits he just got in, and uh, from Spro. So let's 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 see them. Yep. Couldn't have said any better myself. It is December now, 70 degrees in mid-December. Gunshots going off. Don't know what the heck they're shooting at, but we're both in short sleeve shirts. Beautiful out here, but. The winter time, the biggest deal is cranking, throwing crankbait, stuff like that. And even though it's not gotten super cold yet, the water temp is dropping, but the days are getting a lot shorter. So the traditional baits are still going to play, even though the water temp's a little bit warmer than it normally is this time of year. So we're going to go through and kind of tell y'all why I pick up certain crankbaits, you know, certain times, and kind of tell y'all the application once I ordered these for. All of these are pretty much brand new. I fished with a couple of these, pretty much brand new. So y'all be able to see exactly what I ordered and what I'll be fishing with in this winter time. So let's pop open the box. We're going to start off, we're going to let Matt talk about it first. So he fishes for Auburn University now. Been out there trying to catch him. He's been fishing some tournaments lately and stuff. And we're going to let him go through and tell me why he picks up certain crankbaits when. So when would you pick up each different variety of crankbait, bill, you know, the, the body style, colors, whatever. Let us know. Just spill out the golden info he, he possesses. All right, let's see. Where's the traditional square bill? This right here. Yep. All right, so this is your general. This is what you're going to want to start off with as a baseline. So when the fishing's pretty good and it's warm, you you know, you're going to want to go for like a, a more round crankbait like this. And this is a real shallow water crankbait. This is what I, and this one right here in particular, pretty cool because it's, it's translucent. And I, I wish I'd have threw this yesterday because the water got a little clearer yesterday and I was throwing, I was throwing one more like this which obviously is a little more, you know, it doesn't look like something you would throw in clear water. This, uh, this is not the bill I was throwing, but the same the same paint job and everything. But then uh, later on, maybe it gets a little more muddy. You might want to go to something like this, I would say. And then even more muddy than that, you can go for something like a chartreuse. You know, in these flat-sided crankbaits, I would definitely use as it gets colder into into later into December and January. So what's the reason that you want to use something that's more of a flat-sided crankbait in December and January? What makes you pick up the flat-sided crankbait instead of more of a round-style crankbait? Because for me, it's one word, but I'm going to let you touch on it first before I say it. All right, so it's all about the action of okay. the crankbait. So these more round uh, type of crankbaits are going to be wiggling side-to-side -side more and be more erratic compared to a flat-sided crankbait, which is going to have a lot tighter wobble and... Uh, you know, uh, you want a tighter wobble when it's colder and the fish are more lethargic, I would say. Yep. So, one of the reasons that I pick up the different body style of crankbait. So, let me just pick up, I'll just pick up this Pro Rock Crawler, which is a, you know, just to show y'all kind of the difference in body shape. And then, well, I'll pick up a square bill too, and then I'll pick up a little John, just show y'all the difference in, in kind of the body shapes of, you know, one that's pretty much about the same color. So, these colors are about the same, and you can see the the thickness of this body is quite a bit different and the number the biggest thing that dictates the action and dictates why i pick up one or the other is straight up buoyancy and the reason this bait right here is going to float up a lot faster than this bait and this bait's going to have a lot harder wobble because every time that it rolls you've got a, you've got the bill pulling it down you've got the buoyancy pulling it back up and that creates just a harder roll and a harder thump so whenever you hit something it's going to it's going to deflect more because it's more buoyant it's already trying to rise up a little bit more than this one so what that happens is whenever you're fishing these steeper vertical drops you make a like both these crankbaits dive about the same depth but you're going to be able to get this bait down in five six feet and keep it there and really grind it along the bottom on these sharper bluffs whereas this bait right here you really got to wind it you really got to stay on top of it to keep it down there and keep it digging now whenever the water is really warm or, or whenever it's fairly worn and stained you want to go with something like this because it has such a hard vibration and the fish are a little bit more active whenever it starts to clear up a little bit you know and then they're kind of suspended on the bluffs or they're just not quite as active because there's we're on a cooling trend i'll go to a flat sided crankbait because it is easier to keep it a little bit deeper it does seem to have an action where i feel like suspended fish will bite this one a little bit better but the main thing for me is i can keep this bait down there and fish it so slow because it's not quite as buoyant as you know your standard round kind of square bill and another thing is the square bill has more draw power 
than you know a flat sided like little, little john so if you're bouncing something off the tops of trees or something like that like if you're throwing it up over the tops of woods where the fish might be underneath this bait has such a harder thump that i feel like it's going to draw those fish up a little bit better than a flat sided bait wheel so that's why i pick up a you know flat sided bait and a you know square bill type bait in different conditions it's just way easier you know to to draw fish out with this harder thump, but it's way easier to keep this one deep. So remember that whenever you're out there fishing, I almost always have both of them tied on at all times. Here's a way to, to, to you know, kind of execute this. Whenever you're fishing long sloping, like pea gravel points or gravelly points or anything where the fish could be in a big area, you know, like a point that slopes off very slow, the fish could be anywhere from three foot deep all the way out to five foot deep, and that might be a 20 foot span. So I feel like this bait right here is gonna draw them from further because it does have a tighter wobble, uh, uh, I mean a wider wobble. It has more of an aggressive wobble. So it's gonna have more draw power to draw those fish from six, eight, 10, 12 feet even, possibly whenever you're on those little super slow sloping points those deeper steeper places this bait is able to you're able to fish it a little bit slower whenever the strike zone is a lot more condensed so that's another reason why i pick up one over the other so what about the color the colors for me you just have to have all your bases covered you have to have you got to have a shad kind of color crankbait you got to have a crawfish kind of color crankbait and then you need to have something that's just a chartreuse like a chartreuse is just a great great color especially in late fall whenever the water is extremely stained before they really get on that you know crawfish type color so you just always have to have a shad a, a chartreuse and a crawfish type color at all times and in my opinion in every single depth range so what oh what would make you pick up like a a rock crawler over let's just say this, you know, a, a little John MD dives like nine or 10 feet. Rock crawler di dives nine to 14, but w why do you like one over the other? Um, or do you not have real, you don't throw either one of these too I much? I really don't throw either one of these, but just looking at them. He's a square bill dude. Like if he throws a crankbait, it's pretty much gonna be a square bill. And then, uh, you know, a, a sh shallow running flat side of crankbait for the most part. That's yeah. that's what he does. And I'm, I'm very much so, you know, similar to that myself. I throw a square bill the most. And then my second one would be, you know, like a, five or six foot diving flat side of crankbait will be what I throw. Y'all know I throw, you know, a, quite a bit of crankbaits, but it's almost always a square bill. Yeah. With this one right here, I, I mean, just looking at it, I would say it's probably about the same kind of deal as far as the body shape. Because this one does look like it'd be a lot more erratic than this one right here. Yep. Which for me, that means that I'd probably be throwing this one more just because I feel like if the fishing is that is like, if it's not a rough time of the year where I feel like it's super tough, I'm probably not going to be cranking 14 foot deep. Yep. So, but... Uh, I'm with you on that. You know, so, other than that, like, you know, if it's real tough, I might go to try to crank something 9 foot deep. But, I mean, you know, in general, unless I was fishing, you know, maybe if I went to a smallmouth lake, I might would fish that deep. But other than that... Right. You know. But it's the same kind of concepts for for me whenever you're even fishing out deep. You know, if you want to get something like a a rock crawler that dives 14 feet deep yeah that's a great bait for that dead zone but it's an extremely erratic bait it's gonna have a ton of draw power and it's gonna be you know this thing you can get it down there in 10 or 11 feet deep and just reel it extremely extremely slow and keep bottom contact with you know with this bait right here but it still has a thump but that's something that's unique to this bait just as a standard you're more flats i mean wider side of baits like this fat papa right here this bait and this bait is a little bit more of a fair comparison because they are almost the exact same depth range baits but it's the exact same deal you want a ton of draw power you want to use this fat papa and if you want something that's you know going to be able to keep it down there a little bit longer in the strike zone and kind of concentrate on exactly where you need to fish them this uh you know little john md is a little bit better choice for that so it's the same exact concept the fat bo the fatter bodied baits have more erratic action more of a thump to them and it's just going to make it where it has more draw power out there fishing the longer sloping points and also if the fish are extremely aggressive or if they have just gotten out there in the, on the first drop or something early in the year you can go to these well you know wider bodied crankbaits and have a little you know harder of a thump but for the most part i'm like him i throw a square bill a ton and i throw you know four to six seven foot deep is about all i do cranking most of the time you know but i did you know get some of these because we got some tournaments next year looks like they'll play and it is a way it is a great way to catch them in the winter time if you can keep the hooks out of your nice striker clothes long enough to go ahead and actually catch a fish so 
My question is, since y'all have been talking about the difference in which crankbaits y'all would use, my question would be when to use a crankbait rather than a jerkbait or a swimbait. When, what application do you use this? So a jerkbait and a swimbait is an entirely different concept. A jerkbait and a swimbait is for strictly suspended fish. And a lot of times, early in the fall, those fish suspend a lot and they'll stay suspended. But w whenever it gets really, really cold, those fish will actually hug up to the bank, like hug, hug up to the actual rocks. Whether it be riprap, big chunk rock, whatever it is, the fish will actually lay on the bottom to try to retain some of that warmth whenever it does get cold. So that's whenever you pick up the crankbaits and you just go grinding all day and you know, you try to grind the bill all the way down in, in a single day. The jerkbait is more for suspended fish. And that's the cool thing about throwing a jerkbait or a swimbait is, there's no other bait to catch those suspended fish other than some, you know, there's only a few baits to actually catch suspended fish. Whereas a bottom bait, like this right here, you could drag a shaky head, a jig, a Carolina rig, this crankbait, a hundred other crankbaits. I mean, every single bait you can pretty much fish on the bottom. Whereas the suspended fish only bite a jerk bait or a swim bait. So if you start seeing a lot of suspended bait on your grass and stuff, that's whenever you start picking up a jerk bait and trying to find stuff like that. But a crank bait to me is a standard. It's just a little bit easier. There's always going to be fish on bottom. There's not always going to be fish suspended. But in the wintertime, they do suspend a lot more than other times of the year. But that's, that's whenever I pick up a jerk bait is whenever I feel like they're more suspended. Yeah. And also, I would say like... You know, another, like a good application for a swim bait compared to like a, a square bill is, you know, sometimes, like, let's say like summer, it can get really, really clear to where I feel like pretty much most kind of crankbaits are going to be too much for the fish. And I would say that's time when you would like go to like drag in a Kitek on the bottom when it gets super, super clear, super tough. Because, you know, around here we have very tough lakes you can't always go catch them on a square bill in the summer because it just is that tough yeah it is it, crankbaits are really not a bait i throw very much in the summertime at all unless i will be throwing out there you know pretty dang deep for the most part it's going to be a fall winter and spring type of a deal you know i have been throwing it more in the summer recently but for the most part it is it is a you know colder water type bait it's not a it's not a summertime bait for me for the most part. A square bill's not, but I am slowly picking it up more and more. So this year was fishing on Champlain in the summer. I caught a few on a square bill, and then we was fishing on uh, Chickamauga. I caught a couple on square bill. Gunnersville caught a couple on square bill. So I did start using it a lot more in the summer this past year, but for the most part, just what he said is correct. It's not a really good summertime bait, you know, just in general. But in the wintertime, these things absolutely catch them. Any more questions for us, Miss Hunter? I think that's all. Oh yeah, when do you use ones the crankbaits with the with the beads in them? Rattling crankbaits to me is it's almost more of a preference deal. I've never heard of shad that rattles, so I don't use rattling crankbaits very <laughs> often at all. Like I almost never use rattling crankbaits. But this man right here beat my tail one day fishing hydrilla on Lake Ufala, um on a square bill. And he has had a rattle in it, and he was absolutely crushing me. And we've done that a few more times after that. Throwing a rattling square bill or rattling bait around grass seems to be a lot more effective. It just seems to draw them out of the grass for whatever reason. It'll pull them up from underneath the grass and make them react to that crankbait. And that was the first day I ever got my tail really beat by somebody also cranking a square bill was him. And was throwing like the almost the exact same color. He has just had a rattle, and mine did not. So rattling crankbaits for me, most of the time, I don't use them. But whenever the water gets super cold, sometimes I do feel like it works. And then around grass, I feel like it works. So it's kind of just like a, you just kind of play with it. And whatever they're biting, you just keep throwing. For me, anyways, that's kind of the way that I approach all things bass fishing, really. So you don't think it's a deal breaker or a game I don't think changer. it's a deal breaker or not. But okay. pretty amazing that we took this box, most of the crankbaits out. We got them all back in here now. So it's like an episode of Cribs. It's time for y'all to go. <laughs> all right we'll see y'all hope y'all enjoyed that the rod giveaway video we're going to take submissions we're going to draw a winner on december 24th no december 25th christmas day we're going to draw a winner then i will build the rod for y'all whoever wins i'll build that rod so keep sending the video submissions to kdbrkw at gmail.com if y'all want to be entered to win a rod giveaway or to win a rod you get a bit of pick which rod you want Hopefully it'll be a rod that I have, a blank that I have there, so I don't have to order a new one, because then that will just put the time back even further. So we're going to draw the winner December 25th. Somebody's going to get an extra Christmas present. So, all right, we'll see you on the next one. Hit that subscribe and turn the alerts on. Matt, close us out. See y'all. Number one bass fishing tip, go. You got a tip? Get a fake bait. <laughs>
Get a fake bait. <laughs> That's what Hunter's saying today. So. You gotta give a tip. What bait do you like? Uh, the swim jig. There you go. <laughs> I'll talk. I'll talk out. Ask Mama what's her favorite bait. Oh, I don't know. The frog. Yeah, the frog definitely. Why? I just like the frog. What's the reason? <laughs> I like I like, I like it when Kyle uses the it. frog. <laughs> Cause he can make it swim. Yeah, it helps. He okay. can make a deep dive. <laughs> okay, Ty, what's yours? The lizard, for sure. The trick is, you want to overcast it onto the bank on accident, and then slowly reel it into the water so it looks natural coming in. Fish catch it every time. <laughs> That's it. That's all you gotta do. Really good with <laughs> Swim jig with a lizard on back, tied to a frog, would be the best of the best of the best. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Number one fishing tip. Throw it the bank. There you go. That's set, all? set the hook hard and throw it the bank. That's all there is to it. It's that easy. Start asking people that you know that's got land in the area that you want land. Some people ain't thought about selling. But when it's under a real estate, they're trying to get prime. Oh, this is actually beautiful. I didn't know that. Can I show you which one I like? Let's take a look. It's stuck, but this color. It's very pretty. It's like blue with like coral. 